Next on Heritage TV tonight, cutting out the nitty gritty out of the new Odidua Nation. Hope you enjoy it. George Akinola is on cutting edge with Frank Bello. Hi, good evening to you. Uh, my name is Frank Bello. Uh, you're welcome to Heritage TV. You're live with me on Cutting Edge, where we are about to trash the need to get Yoruba Nation, the Ududua Republic, out of the contraption called Nigeria. With me to discuss this tough but extremely volatile issue this night, Saturday, the 20th day of June 2020 is no other person. One of the people who, well, I'll say this person is very outspoken and one of the top members of the Yoruba World Congress in Nigeria is not too scared. He's not afraid of anyone. You've probably watched his video clips that went viral on the social media on youtube on whatsapp and it is still trending till this present day i'd like to welcome to cutting edge mr george akinola mr akinola you're welcome to heritage tv thank you <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Akinola. Now, um, right. we've got varieties. Let me put it this way on Heritage TV. We've got varieties of um, viewers, listeners across the whole world. We've got viewers from the Biafran community. We've got viewers from the Yoruba, Yoruba nations, from Edo, from uh, Cross River, from Calabar, Efik, Kanuri, uh, Calabari people. They watch this program. The powers that be, many of them, they watch this program. They keep an eye on Heritage TV. Heritage TV perhaps is one of the outspoken online TV media station outside Nigeria that is not too scared to say it as it is and to correct the wrongs that are done in our society, be it in Nigeria, be it the rest of Africa, black nations and the rest of the world. Mr. George Akinola, could you please introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us exactly who you are so that uh, everyone across the whole world will know who George Akinola is. Over to you. Thank you. Well, um, Omoyo Vanimi, Ilundu Motiwa. I'm a Yoruba man. I'm from Ondo State, uh, Ondo town precisely. I'm a trained architect. Actually, I'm a fellow of the Nigeria Institute of Architects. And um, I've had about 35 years of practice as an architect. And of course, you know, I'm a member of the executive of the Yoruba World Congress. Right. Now, um, can I ask you, when did you join the Yoruba World Congress, Mr. Akiola? We formed it together. I'm one of the foundation members. One of the founding members of Yoruba World Congress. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So I believe, I strongly believe that um, you are very close to uh, 
the National Secretary, uh, Mr. Killer, and you are equally very close to Professor Banji Akitwe and some of the top hierarchy within the Yoruba World Congress. Am I right in saying so? You're right. Okay. Now, we want to talk about um, Nigeria. And we want to talk about our beloved nation, the Yoruba nation, the Odudua Republic. Now, there's been a lot of agitation in Nigeria of late, especially with the fact that um, some schools of thought will say, is this Muhammadu Buhari? Uh, is this not Muhammadu Buhari? We've got situations whereby there are insecurity across the nooks and crannies of Nigeria. Killer headsmen, Ruga, um, raping, maiming, Boko Haram. It's never been like this in the history of Nigeria in the last six years. Again, restructuring and a total breakup of Nigeria is another theme that is currently being sank in Nigeria of late. Mr. Akinola Femi Fani Kayode. FFK. He said, and I quote, they should restructure Nigeria. Underscore that word, restructure, because I'm coming back to that word later on, restructuring. A northern sheikh by the name of Sheikh Gumi, very outspoken equally said the north will suffer and when that suffering comes in the north it will be volatile the southwest will be stable the southeast will be stable the north the volatility in the north, perhaps to Sheikh Gumi's um, psyche, was probably due to Boko Haram and then no monopoly of power in the north. Professor Banji Akitoye said, and I quote, the Yoruba nation, the Odudua Republic, need a total control of its resources and then secondly he retreated these statements by the maeti allah that allah gave the north the power by the british to rule over nigeria now Looking at all this issue of restructure, breakup, I said underscore restructure. Looking at those two, is two, two issues that's wrapped around Nigeria at the moment. One, agitating for restructuring, and the other side, like yourself, like myself, and many other right full thinking Nigerians or Yoruba sons and daughters will opt out for a complete breakup. In your own opinion, Mr. Akinola, what is the solution to our coexistence as a nation in Nigeria? Over to you. <laughs> you've asked a lot of questions and you've built a very very large template 
Um, well, I, let, let me quickly um, <clears throat> adjust and go back to status quo ante. Two cannot live together unless they are three. Right. Pre-1804, before the British came, we were separate nations. We were all separate nations, and we were not conquered by the British. I'm talking about the Yoruba now. We were not conquered by the British. What we signed with the British, because I have to go to status quo ante to be able to um, put this in proper perspective. We were not conquered by the British. What we signed with the British were treaties of trade and cooperation. They were not treaties of conquest or subjugation. So that has to be very clear. And it was what this, it was all this that the British took into all the treaties that we signed with them. We have copies of all these treaties that the British armed um, themselves with to do what they call this amalgamation in 1914, which is a massive error. But of course, it was done to um, advance the economic interests of the British. So whatever happened, happened, and it's been classified as a monumental mistake. A monumental error because we are completely different peoples. The Yoruba nation presently in Nigeria is over 60 million. All over the world, we are over 300 million. When you count those people in the diaspora, in the, in the um, 500 year diaspora, and the people in the latest diaspora of the um, yeah, 20th century. In the various countries of the world where we are as Yoruba, in America, USA, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Jamaica, in Brazil, in Cuba, in St. Lucia, in um, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and so on and so forth, the Yoruba form a very large diaspora population, close to 300 million, if no more. So we shouldn't be talking of being in Nigeria. There is no reason why we should be here. Secondly, you will discover that we don't share the same worldview. The cosmogonic belief of the Yoruba is totally different from every other tribe. And we are completely unique. We are unique in the way we dress. We are unique in the way in our culture. We are unique in our world outlook. We are unique in our developmental aspirations. We are totally unique and different from the rest of Nigeria. So we have said it many times over that we want out we do not belong to nigeria and we want out anybody now who's telling you that they want restructuring he's begging the question because we have said it that it is too late for restructuring a lot of people have been shouting and clamoring for restructuring all over the whole place oh restructuring is it is an old outmoded outdated song nobody wants that song anymore nobody wants to sing that song from that song sheet we don't even want resource control why are we making anybody to own what rightly belongs to us why we don't want resource control we want we own everything in this geographic space right from time immemorial Neither do we want sovereign national conference where we sit down with somebody and then we start arguing, hey, this is what you get, this is what you get. No, we want out. That is the only way we can achieve our God given potential. And all these things that we are saying, they are all in the, uh, in the, they are in the um, uh, uh, charters of the United Nations, the Charter of the African Union the Charter of Ibn Ekowas, the right to self-determination. Two cannot stay together unless they agree. A situation where somebody says Nigeria belongs to them is talking trash. They are talking baldadash. And that kind of trashy talk, I don't need to make any comment beyond the fact that when you say Nigeria belongs to you, Go ahead and take your Nigeria, but Yoruba land is not part of all that. Yoruba land is definitely emphatically not part of all that. 
any intruder, any person who wants to um, annex Yoruba land is asking for trouble. Like the gentleman who said, the gentleman from, um, is it um, Yetiala, Kalta, Hure, or whatever nonsense, he said something to the effect that uh, they will bring um, uh, vigilantes and they will put them in every part of Nigeria. Let me, me use this opportunity and this medium to tell him that is asking for is making a declaration of war that's the way we consider it you deploy anybody here in any uniform you are declaring war on the Yoruba nation and there will be appropriate sanctions there will be consequences let him go and tell the people that are sent him that there will be consequences that cannot and will not be allowed to stand the Yoruba nation is a massive massive highly educated civilized race we fight our wars differently and we are not going to sit back and allow any trashy talk from any trashy group of people to keep talking as if the own even the air we breathe <laughs> that's that's laughable and the constitution that they have foisted on nigeria that's another fraud that constitution tells a lie about itself right from the very beginning. It says, we the people. Where did we sit down together as we the people? To agree? Nowhere. We didn't sit down to agree. We didn't set a date. We didn't agree on the terms of what the constitution is saying. So, I've been issued. The constitution tells a lie about itself. So, in that way, the constitution of Nigeria, the 19th constitution, is a fraud. We have taken it to court and the veteran government is even afraid to continue with the case so they have adjourned it and died which means that they don't know how to go forward from there because they have boxed themselves in a corner a constitutional corner that constitution is not our constitution it's not the yoruba constitution and it will it cannot sustain it cannot survive any onslaught in any court of law on any international forum. So that's it on that. As per what Fanikai or Day and Co and Co have been talking about restructuring, it is too late for all that. It's not going to solve our problems. The problem that Yoruba has is Nigeria. Nigeria is the impediment to Yoruba progress. As I've said in so many of my releases, without Nigeria, we won't be where we are. If Nigeria is out of the equation, you will see the way the Yoruba will soar. And this has been shown, it's not as if we are boasting. We have showed this earlier in the 50s, in the 60s. Yoruba was far above every other person. We were first among equals. In fact, no nation in Africa could hold the candle to us. So the fact that we find ourselves in this conundrum, in this um, very embarrassing state, Cause for concern, and I don't think any Yoruba man should come forward today and be talking about restructuring. These people have said that they don't want restructuring, that the only way they can want they can accept restructuring is through war. So, what else do you want? They said they, it's only through war that they can accept restructuring. So they don't want restructuring, they don't they because they are the ones enjoying this present status quo, they want to sustain it. You can't blame them. That's the way that they, they are defending their own interests. So Yoruba, of all you, have to rise up to defend our own collective interest too. I think that puts me to uh, the question there. Hmm. Now, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Akiola, for clearing that. In fact, uh, you did make mention of. Um, the fact that uh, the Yoruba rays are far more superior in anything and we are nothing to be compared to because we had already done so in the 50s, the 60s and the 70s. Now, consider, considering how sophisticated we are and the fact that we've got some more in our needs. I repeat, moles. M O L E S. Moles. I understand you. 
Now, those modes that are now agitating for that restructuring, am I right in assuming that those modes are the ones benefiting from the cabals and the contraption called Nigeria? Over to you, Mr. Akinola. Well, you know, it's neither here nor there. Some people are, um, uh, they are logically convinced that restructuring is where we should go. So they should bring their arguments to the table. Some are saying restructuring because one way or the other, they have been benefiting from the status quo. And quite a number of people are just confused. They don't know what it means to be for the country to be restructured. So um, I will not say it's because they are moles or fifth colonists. Some of them may be moles, fifth colonists, and whatever you call them. I mean that 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 is you know it has it's not indigenous to Yoruba land alone. All over the world, you know, in different countries and climes, you have people who have betrayed the um, collective causes of their people. So. They exist in every. They exist in every country. They exist in every collective. But the point to realize, the point to note and emphasize, is that there is a critical mass that is moving at an ever increasing momentum, and that critical mass of the Yoruba people is saying that the Yoruba people want to leave Nigeria. That critical mass is gaining momentum, and that momentum will soon, as, it will soon attain escape velocity. When that is achieved, all fifth colonies, all moles, and people that don't really understand and are talking about restructuring, they will have no, uh, they will have no other alternative than to comply. Because this is an idea whose time has come. This is an idea that has gained the currency of time. And forever, it is irreversible. It is irreversible. Whatever the Yoruba have set their hands to, they will achieve. That has been, you know, the that has been uh, the history of the Yoruba all over our known history, all over the millennia. We have always achieved what we set our hands to. And this particular group, the Yoruba has never asked for uh, Nigeria to be dissolved before. The Hausa Fulani people asked for it in the 60s. They said, Araba, Araba. The Igbos asked for it. You know, even the Niger Delta people asked for it. The Igbos asked for it in the 1960, 66, 67 to 70 war. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. Niger Delta people, Tripla, Dakaburu, the Yoruba have never really asked. Because the Yoruba were a very, very didactic, cerebral, very intuitive race. We don't just do things. Nobody is doing whatever we are doing now. Nobody is saying whatever we are saying now because it's the fashion. No, we are saying whatever we are saying because right now we have thought deeply, met collectively, and rationalized this that this is the best for our people. We're not fighting anybody. We are just saying this is where we want to go. So if you say you don't want us to go, then you are trying to stop a train that is moving at maximum speed it is irreversible the yoruba have decided so anybody who wants to do restructuring we don't want to leave anybody behind so we are going to start engaging everybody which is all we have been doing on the altar of logic we are not going to force it down anybody's truth if you want to remain in nigeria please go ahead but the geographic space of yoruba land will be governed by the yoruba a situation where you have the nigerian ports which they call the Nigerian ports, which are only Yoruba ports, being governed by a full animal from the Sahel is unacceptable. A situation where you have Yoruba borders at Semi and Idiroko being um, uh, superintended by full animals from the Sahel is completely out of place. It's unacceptable. A situation where you have many of federal government um, parastatals federal government agencies in Yoruba land being superintended by Fulani or Hausa people in Yoruba land or Igbo people in Yoruba land is completely unacceptable. 
we have to call a spade a spade. Don't call it an agricultural instrument or any other fanciful English word. Call it what it is. This is unacceptable. And now, we will continue to put every structure in place to ensure that we achieve our goal of Odutua Republic. Now, in fact, that is now, thank you very much for that clarification, Mr. Akiola. You see, what you've just said is now going to take me into the next stage of this interview. I did make mention that I wasn't going to name some of those moles, but I'll be quick in naming one of the moles that's already been parading the Yoruba land uh, for quite some time now. Now, you, you said that the mobilization for us to realize the Yoruba nation, Odutua Republic, is gathering a maximum velocity. And we've got the likes of Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, who is now thinking of going for the presidency in 2023 they've just conducted election 2019 the people of that contraption they've not witnessed any good governance since the election but just immediately after the fraudulent election that they managed to wreak they're already planning for 2023 where exactly do you think if at the speed the maximum speed that you outline that we will get our yoruba nation within the next few more couple of months or within a year time where do you expect the Yorubas to put the likes of those that more that we've just identified. Over to you, Mr. Akiola. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's that's quite interesting. Um, you know, nobody needs to tell um, a blind man that the market has closed. When he doesn't hear noise or the pandemonium usually accompanied with the market. The blind man will know that the market has closed and it's time to go home. So, <laughs> as it is, um, people who want to go and contest an election um, have not learned their full and final lessons from what history has to teach. History has taught us that we are dealing with players. These people that have Nigeria by the jugular presently uh, have been playing generations upon generations of Yoruba people. And if you don't learn the lesson from history and you keep repeating the mistakes of history, they call that thing, you know, they said those people who don't learn uh, uh, lessons that history has to teach are actually um, exhibiting insanity. Because when you continue doing the same thing that history has taught you that it's wrong to do, uh, you are not showing that you have clarity. Now, let's go back to 1820, 23, 1823, when the Fulanis surreptitiously entered the Lorry and encouraged Afonja, the Yare Onoka Kampo, to, um, to fight his sovereign, you know, Allah Fiyan, our lady, Allah Fiyan for you. Well, they deceived him. They helped him to uh, sack the empire. And, uh, you know, he thought that he had already gotten everything in place. They ended up killing him when he least suspected. He did not trust his people. He did not want to go with his people. He actually disbanded his Yoruba army and went to work with the Fulani and the Jamaa. 
Well, to date, that's how we do Rival Lost in Lorry. Fast forward a couple of years. The same thing was done to Ari Onokaka and Fuetu, who succeeded Afonja. He was deceived too, and he lost his life to the same typical. Let's take it to 1966, um, the time of Akintola. Akintola was deceived the same way. That is uh, Samuel Adjoki Akintola, the premier of the West after our battle yeah. Yeah. He was deceived the same yeah. way. And, uh, you know, they dangled some funny carrots in front of him. And he bought into it. We all know what happened to him. So, thank, thank you. They did the same thing to Abiola. Ariel, uh, another Ariel Nokakamfu. All these people are mentioning the Ariel Nokakamfu, mind you. Right from Africa yes. to Edu. Yeah, to Akitola, to Abiola. Another Ariel Nokakamfu. He was deceived by the Fula and Innos. And when he got the ultimate prize, they didn't expect that he would win that election of June 12, 1993. They didn't expect that he would win. But he ended up winning. And he won so massively and so embarrassingly. Then some people now came forward and said they cannot accept. That is the cause of all these problems. That is, since 1993, we have been in that debacle. Since 1993, that is when the Yoruba fully woke up that this cannot continue. Because some people out of all these northerners now said that they will not allow Abiola to be their commander in chief. Who are you to decide? Who are you to decide who rules Nigeria? Nigerian people have spoken. You said no. Okay, fine. So Ariel Nokaka and Fabiola was not allowed to secure his mandate. He was not allowed to enjoy his mandate. In fact, they killed him in prison. That is extremely unacceptable. They killed him and went ahead and deceived. Uh, another Yoruba man, Obasanjo, thinking that he had control. So all these people have either failed or they failed and were killed or they failed and were imprisoned. Now, here we are in the present moment with Ashiwa Jubala met Nungu. You know, he's free to aspire to anything that he wants. Everybody, any Nigerian, any Yoruba man is free to aspire. But we are telling you that the train has left the station. That train has left the station. If you do not learn from all these, um, all these uh, instances of history that I've given, and you go ahead and make the same mistake of following the belief that you can be president of Nigeria, you are asking for massive failure on your part you will be a victim of the express train and the people that you think are your supporters the people and that are encouraging you to go ahead they will you will those who ride the tiger they always end up in its stomach my advice to him is that he should remember that he's a yoruba man and that he should follow the course the natural course of history as the Yoruba have decided to rewrite their own history now. That's the best thing for everybody because ultimately he's free to be the president of Nigeria, but to be in Nigeria without Yoruba land. Thank you. Hmm. Now, in fact, let's take um, this issue a step further uh, the issue of Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. Now, he wants to rule. Nigeria, he wants to be the president. Uh, we've got another situation, another of Yoruba son, Omoyele Showare, who does not believe, quote, mm -hmm. whether he, this was confirmed, but quoted as saying that he wants to rule Nigeria and not the Yoruba nation. Bolatinumbu, Mr. Akiola, what if Bolatinumbu suddenly changed curse, his tactics? If 2023 is not 
visible for him because from some quarters there are indications that Bolatinumbu wants to have a go at the presidency because the North made a deal with him in 2015 that he will be the next president and now they're claiming there wasn't any rotational agreement and that the power will remain in the north what if suddenly Bolatinumbu discover that he's been tricked by the Fulanese in the north and he now joined the bandwagon of saying, oh, let's restructure, but not full Yoruba or Odudua autonomy to get out of that contraption. What if Bolatinumbu suddenly starts singing, restructuring, and then secondly, what if he then says to you, to Professor Banji Akitoye, to all the Yoruba leaders, okay, we don't want to be part and parcel of Yoruba because my ambition to be the president of Nigeria has been truncated. I want to go for a full breakup. What are your takes on this, Mr. Akala? I've told you before that um, it's too late for restructuring. It's definitely too late. Nobody is considering all that anymore. If they are considering it, they are they are entitled to their opinion. But if Tinubu, I don't want, I, I, I mean, we're wasting time talking about Tinubu. I don't want to waste time on such, I don't need to. Yeah, talk just about it because we have to it's their opinion. He can, by, he, can by decide, day, he can decide to say, he, he can decide to say, okay, it is not working. Um, I want to realign back with my people. How will you, how will you welcome Ola Tinubu into your meet, knowing fully well? that, oh, this man once deceived us. Over to you, Mr. Kinala. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, we have said it before that in Yoruba World Congress, at least, that no Yoruba man will be left behind. No Yoruba man will be left behind. But you are afraid to leave yourself behind if you choose. So if anybody now comes and says, ah, no, I don't believe in this thing anymore. They are deceiving us, blah, blah. And wants to join forces with us, the more the merrier. This is the way of tomorrow. <laughs> it's, it's very clear. It's, as I said, it's inevitable. The Dua Republic is inevitable. We are not shouting or fighting or doing anything about it. It is an idea whose time has come. And it will be realized. Go and mark it. Right. Of course. Definitely. Not Ibos, now, please I will... recognize that. We are not. Hello. Hello, Mr. Frank. We are not Igbo people, yes. we are not loud and aggressive people. <laughs> we are not people who just shout because we like the sound of our voice and continue to express that we have this when we don't have it. No, we Yoruba recognizes and understands the depth and the unfathomable depth of our power. We know what we have, we know what we carry. Mm. We have a 10,000 year old technology at our disposal that nobody else understands. So we right. know where we are going. So I want to, I want to and everybody says, oh, too late for a structure that would do our public, the more the merrier. They are welcome on board. All right. Now I want to take you through one of your colleagues and um a good friend of yours in Afeniferi, because you know quite well that Afeniferi is probably divided up into three different sections now. And this gentleman I want to talk about, and I want you to please correct me, Yinka Odumaki. <clears throat> Yinka Odumaki apparently was Muhammad Buhari's spokesman when Buhari was campaigning alone as a lone ranger under the umbrella of the CPC. And the same Yinka Odumaki in Afeniferi is singing a totally different, singing from a totally different hymn sheet. 
how will you describe the actions of Afeniferi, whether it is the renewal group or the real, the authentic Afeniferi, and their working patterns on how we will realize Odudua Republic, most especially with other groups, such as Yoruba World Congress and yourself. How will you, yourselves, Professor Banja Akitoye and everyone in Yoruba World Congress, how will you describe the way they are putting up their own fight? Because Yoruba World Congress is putting up a big fight. And I will describe some section of the Afeniferi group as dormant. What are your takes on this, Mr. Akinola? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not a spokesperson of Afeniferi. In, you know, and, 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 and the three of them, I'm not a spokesman of any of yeah. the three of them. I understand. I understand. Right. I will um, like to recognize that every Yoruba person has a contribution to make are uh, always all welcome so far is along the progressive agenda of the Yoruba race to realize the full potential of autonomy you know self-determination and um our our own nation so those are clear after any fairy renewal group more or less if you don't know if you don't don't forget they started done development agenda for western nigeria that more or less gave up, gave birth to Amotekun. So, to that extent, you can say Aveni Ferry Renewal Group has been very useful. And uh, we worked together with them to uh, ensure that uh, the Amotekun dream was not truncated. And you, as I'm sure you know, Yoruba World Congress was in the forefront. We deployed people on the streets yeah. to ensure that that didn't happen. Now, Aveni Ferry, the cutaway group that is working with Buhari, Onda, Fasomi, and whatever. I don't know anything about them. I don't even know where they stand. But they are fairly fairly being represented by Inka Udumaki. Um, you see, we cannot continue with business as usual. Otherwise, we will spend another 20, 30, 50 years in this gulag. We have to do, we have to change our tactics and the way we are doing business. So that's why the method being adopted by a fairly fairly does not go with today's agitation. Only Ajawo, Yilomo, Ehorowo, Yile. I can say that somehow or the other, the tactics and techniques of um, that group is a bit anachronistic. What we need to do now, the Yoruba World Congress has, we have revamped the whole system and the way we want to do business with Nigeria. So that's why you find that the people that are talking from the Yoruba World Congress are talking emphatically with all seriousness. They are open-eyed in their agitation and whatever we believe. And we are making systematic, taking systematic steps to achieve our goals. Scientific steps. We are scientists. We are ethno eth ethnologists. We are anthropologists. We are historians. We know where we are going and we know the path to reach it. We welcome synergy with different groups. Be they Afeni Ferry, be they whatever group. In fact, uh, Yoruba World Congress has over 100 groups under its fold. So we welcome everybody. As I said earlier, we will not leave any Yoruba man behind. But please don't drag our coattails. Let us zoom forward to realize this collective dream. Mm. In fact, in fact, um, uh, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Mr. Akiola. Um, I want to talk about how Yoruba World Congress are uniting the different uh, sections of the uh, Yoruba tribe, the Ijebus, the Egbas. The Akures, the Ekitis, the Undos, uh, the Elishas, um, and everyone right up to the there Awuris. There are 25 universal groups. Now, um, we've got our different Obas, and some of our Obas 
the Oloria days. Some of them are at loggerheads with themselves. Um, there were some instances whereby some others might feel, oh, I am superior, you are not superior. How do we speak with one voice and all our others speak from the same hymn sheet that many of us who are fed up living abroad wants to come to our own nation? What is the role of the Yoruba World Congress and many of the organizations that are involved in the agitation to make sure that each and every region in Yoruba land are consolidated and then they are united. How do you intend to go about this unification? Mr. Akinola, over to you. Well, the, we um, don't forget that the Yoruba society is an egalitarian society where um, we are driven by not by uh, understanding and logic. Um, a society that one way or the other, you know, education, Yoruba society is a very, is a highly educated society. And education makes the people easy to lead and difficult to enslave. So uh, in the banter of logic, in the exchange of knowledge between various parties, we will always reach a consensus. You would, if you, you, if you go back to history, you will discover that any time the Yoruba is united behind it, it's because they have a full understanding of that cause and they have maximum consensus. So they're able to move forward as one. So the Yoruba nation is driven by logic. And that is what we are appealing to in everybody. So we put our point forward and people debate it and then we come to a consensus. That's why we keep saying we will not leave anyone behind. There, are, there is going to be a Yoruba assembly where different interest groups will be, will be invited to. Um, they will set to. Uh, nobody is going to rob the of Yoruba land that you know I'm superior to you. And, no, no, no. We all come together, talk among ourselves and discuss and agree on the way forward. I can only push my own ideas as emphatically as I, as I desire. But of course, other people may, um, they may oppose it. So they are free to put their, their, their um, points on the altar of logic and then we compare. Ultimately, when the Yoruba will reach consensus, that consensus, as I told you, is building us at a high momentum round now. So we will keep meeting, we'll keep talking. And of course, Yoruba is one. We have three things going for us. Number one, we are from one source. All Yoruba people are from Ife. Number two, all Yoruba people have either Oba or Olu or Owa or Olofi or whatever, still under the same uh oba oba ship institution then thirdly i keep saying it one language one people one culture a decon a shakon a yakon that is a very high source of unity and um all we need to do is just continue to drive this uh, collective idea forward and then uh, we have unity don't forget that can never be 100 percent unity and that's what that's the beauty of the Yoruba nation. You know, we, we, we encourage dissent. We encourage people to say their minds. And uh, whatever they say, however they say it, it will be put on the altar of logic and discourse. So we don't have any problems with regards to unity once the idea is altruistic, once the idea is something that all of us desire. Thank you. Right. Uh, in fact, that issue of unity is particularly. Uh, is of interest to me and it is of interest to many of the Yoruba sons and daughters that are in the diaspora because uh, over this few couple of months that the agitation for an Ududua Republic, a Yoruba nation, gathered momentum 
uh, especially uh, uh, from the diaspora and within Nigeria itself. We've seen counter videos agitating equally that there is no need for for us to break up and that the Yoruba people are their own problems and that if we cannot trust and love ourselves, how can we be a better nation? Could you please explain to uh, most of those Yoruba sons and daughters who are still confused and who still believe that we're not speaking with one voice and that we don't have unity and that, again, we don't love one another. Mr. Kiola, over to you. <laughs> that's, that's rather funny. You know, which nation do you have on earth where you have 100% uh, unanimity of purpose? There's none. You know, every nation in the world uh, has its own dissenting groups. You know, but so anybody can say, um, when they want to discourage us, they come forward with such an argument that, uh, well, the, you know, around two days. Technologically, we are far superior to every other president around here because there was a leader that we had that encouraged everybody and brought all of us together. If that was achieved once, it can still be achieved again. Forget about all these self-defeatist self statements that you'll buy their own problem. So if, if, if Yoruba among themselves uh, are not agreeing, is that an excuse for us to not subjugate ourselves under some rabid other groups? Is that, the, I mean, look at the logic. It simply, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Let us fight among ourselves, but let us be our own nation. Let us be our own leaders. Let us argue, let us disagree, but let us be the ones taking that decision among ourselves. We want our own nation. Ah, it's like children of the same father. Don't they argue? Don't they disagree? But they are still bearing the same name, Odutua. So let us argue. Let us argue with Ijebu. Let Ijebu argue with Ugumosho and all the rest. But we are still one people. And one language, one people, one culture. We will always find ways to agree. And I would, you see, it's very interesting. It's getting more exciting now. That's why Yoruba all over the world are not looking at it. Forget about all those people who say uh, Yoruba are their own problems. I know their own problems. Uh, Fulani people know their own problems. Fulani now, they are doing whatever they are doing now, killing people, maiming people, doing all those terrible things that are doing all over Nigeria. They are digging their own graves. Because everybody ends up hating them. So they are their own problems in that way. Igbos are their own problems in so many other ways. Let Yoruba find solutions to its own problems. And that's why we are fully convinced that the best way to go is to have our own nation where we will be free to disagree and agree among ourselves. Right. Right. Uh, the North, uh, I, want to, I want to take this um, to a different level. The North does not want to leave Nigeria. They continue to send down their uneducated, unproductive Almanjiris down south with COVID-19 despite the lockdown. What do you think, in your own opinion, could be behind their motives for sending down all their uneducated and unproductive Almanjiris down south. Mr. Akiola, over to you. Well, um, I, I can't remember any occasion or situation where the North, as represented by the Fulani, have expressed love for the Yoruba nation. Neither can I remember uh, any uh, time in history where they assisted with any problem that we might be having in Yoruba land. They have either continued to exploit, you know, 
our resources or our people one way or the other to achieve their own purpose they are not our friends the earlier we realize that one the better a nation that sends the dregs of its society down south to your country they don't like you a nation that sends uh um the um totally people that are like beggars down to your space they don't like you and now they have not hidden it meeti allah has said it mark Ban has said it all of them have kept saying it that they are bringing their people down south to come and overthrow and overtake your land they have said that they are coming to kill me rape and take over your land so they are not hitting their hostile intentions towards us but i would like to use this opportunity to send a message a clear message to any group of people that may have hostile intentions towards yoruba land and its people that you are only having you are only having that kind of feeling to your own peril because you will be swallowed hook line and sinker in yoruba land no nation has ever succeeded in defeating the yoruba and it will not start now so i would suggest that they clearly quickly and without wasting time stop having that kind of um uh desire in their minds because it will bounce back and boomerang against them 100 percent but beyond all that if you are coming to conquer your land i wish you luck <laughs> i wish you luck because you will <laughs> you will fail so woefully and you will hasten the, the the division of nigeria continue to do that and then Nigeria, what we plan to have in one year, we will have in two months. So that's that's just the way it is, you know. So whatever right. anybody may feel with regards to um, uh, uh, sending your people oh, there, goodness. either as beggars or as um, uh, um, what do we call them now, the guards and all the rest, or as uh, warriors or soldiers you know cells that you want to use to do whatever you're beating it um you are definitely causing disaster for your people because it will, it cannot happen the yoruba nation is too large a nation for such um sarcastic ambitions to succeed so they better, you know, to remove their soldiers and take them back home. It will not happen. Let's let's talk about Amotekun, Mr. Kiola. Amotekun, the security outfit by the Odudua people, the Yorubas. One state, just one state out of the yoruba nations the say the yoruba states my mistake yoruba states refused to sign the amotekun bill and pass it through their parliament mr akiola what do you think might be going on through the minds of the governor of lagos state uh, babajide sonwolu and his assembly who refused to sign the Amotekun bill into law. Can we perceive Songwolu as carrying out the bidding of his political godfather or is he waiting and he's hoping to see how things will unfold in the future? paying close attention to the way our agitation is going or is he going to wait until when they start killing 
people in Lagos, which is already happening. Why is Lagos State behind the remaining other states in Yoruba land? Well, um, <clears throat> let me quickly say this. I cannot speak for the Lagos State government. I can only judge them by their actions. And um, in Lagos State, the Amoteku movement has not, uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't gone beyond any other one in the whole of the uh, Southwest, you know, because they already have in place a neighborhood watch. And that neighborhood watch is what they said they will metamorphose into Amoteku, their own Amoteku in Lagos State. Don't forget, I led the rally in Lagos State. I led the Yoruba World Congress rally in Lagos State to agitate for Amoteku. And um, I cannot say here that uh, the, uh, the state of, I mean, Lagos State has not um, moved in the same direction. Lagos State is a very sophisticated state. I will not um, hold brief for the governor or the um, people of Lagos, the assembly, because uh, that, that they have not done their bit. They said that the bill that they had already passed at the assembly with regards to the Lagos State um, Neighborhood Watch is what they will metamorphose into Amoteku. They were very clear about that. So I don't see anywhere where you think that they are lagging behind. And um, all states are not moving at the same speed. But of course, I can assure you that Lagos is your land, 100%. And whatever is here will be, um, we are all here and we'll be, we will all bear witnesses to history. Thank you very much. I think um, uh, maybe uh, Mr. Thomas, could you please um, help us and assist us by opening up the phoning session so that um, our viewers can ring in and they can make their own contributions, uh, throw their questions to Mr. George Akiola from the Yoruba World Congress. I'm sure they are all eager. They're waiting very patiently, wanting to question you uh, on some of this burning issue. Now, I'm still very much on the issue of Amotekun. The Mayeti Allah and the Fulanese, they gave conditions to the Southwest Amotekun, that they have to include in their recruitment the Fulanese into Amotekun. How did you in the Southwest, in Nigeria, receive such statement? It's an insolent, it's an insolent request. We find it very insolent, rude, and you know, um, it's sort of balderdash. I'm sure you know we trashed have it you, and we threw it out. Yeah, it was, but yeah, I I know it was trashed, but could it mean they are trying to undermine the spiritual power of the Yoruba tribe or their political power? Both both that's the way they operate and we know their tricks that's the way they operate now they have even said something there that they are bringing their own vigilantes into nigeria into all corners of nigeria if they want to bring nigeria, their yeah. vigilantes into all corners of nigeria they had better stay out of yoruba land because we, that is tantamount to a declaration of war on the yorubas and how how have made it very we... clear Okay, okay. What if the Fulanese suddenly invade our space in Yoruba land? How are we prepared to counter them? Mr. Kiala, over to you. Well, uh, that's not a question I'm prepared to answer. Good. Let the answer be in the way. All right. All right. Um, I've got loads of um, comments from. Um, our viewers around the world uh let me take them and i'll read i'll start reading them for you uh 
guys if you want to ring in uh the number to call is plus four four seven three four one two three four five six oh maybe mr thomas can please pin that number down so that mm -hmm. all our callers can make their contributions but in the meantime let me quickly go through some of the comments mr adewale olasumbo said i will know what told us oh it's gone because these guys are just they, their comments are very fast omolara sunshine um okay i'll take uh, that one too is gone james james ayola this struggle is not about making mouth or shouting it's about strategy yeah to quit um uh, mr akinola said it um i think uh, let me see this um let me see this irelu abike abike ade olagoke said correct um james agbo james ayola again said yoruba extend to bene republic togo ghana ivory coast senegal syria alone not to talk of brazil argentina cuba trinidad and tobago is that right mr akinola <laughs> let me clarify that let me clarify it yoruba land extends to um the south the six southwestern states of nigeria um a 75 percent of kwara states and um six local governments in kogi state three local governments in delta state you know that's uh south that's um <clears throat> worry north i mean worry south worry southwest and the uh, one other one those three so then outside nigeria yoruba land is in republic of bene they make uh up they, they claim now that we are over 60 percent in republic of bene in togo we are like 40 percent up to the borders of ghana and within ghana those are indigenous yoruba so those places can easily be called yoruba land because the indigenous population there are yoruba but any other place where you find yoruba they were taken as slaves so when you find yoruba either as slaves or as traders when you have yoruba in um, or travelers uh where you have yoruba in Côte d'Ivoire or in syria alone they are like that like for example there are some so many indigenous nigeria i mean yoruba people in syria alone and these people speak yoruba they bear yoruba names but they are not nigerians they are syria Alonians. and those ones who are taken there either as slaves or they went there as traders but beyond like, beyond the africa you know you have yoruba in um all those uh, countries that i've mentioned who were taken out of nigeria or taken out of this nigerian space as slaves and then you know we mentioned places like brazil like the usa like the uk like trinidad and tobago uh, you know saint lucia cuba jamaica uh, haiti dominican republic and so on and so forth so all over latin america even venezuela <clears throat> venezuela and the other countries there in, in latin america you have a, you have your right people there so these are indigenous yoruba people in all these caribbean countries and america and the uh, uk then do you have the later diaspora those people who traveled out of nigeria either to trade or to study or to immigrate for economic reasons like <clears throat> people who are in the uk the economic migrants, they are Yoruba in the UK, they are Yoruba in the US and so many other countries. They are diaspora and Yorubas. So that is the description of Yoruba and Yoruba land. Yoruba land is different from where you have Yorubas. Indigenous Yoruba land is in Nigeria, in Republic of Benin, in uh, Togo, and a little part of Ghana. That's indigenous Yoruba land. But diaspora and Yoruba, they are in all those other countries that I mentioned. I hope that has given enough clarity. 
Yeah, and I, we 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 we, we cut that this is really getting interesting because we will come back to that. But let's quickly take that call. Hello, caller. Uh, what's your you name? And call. yes, hello, caller. Uh, what's your yes. name and where are you calling from? Yeah. Uh, your name and where you're calling yeah. from? Uh, I would like to draw our attention to a few things on this show. And I would like to hear the response of our of the of the Yoruba Amotephone especially. There was a video circulating on the social media if, and the information we got about some the event happened around Okeoko area of your state sometimes last week a video whereby a lady was being raped by supposed to lady for any expert what is the response of the um, temple court to this kind of events to arrest and possibly prevent such reoccurrence in Yoruba land uh, to how effective because I on the social media today I saw your state government uh, governor uh, he posted a picture of a CCTV uh, a control room for your state how effective can we possibly have this all across Yoruba land to ensure and to enhance security and safety Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Akiola, over to you. Yeah, um, it wasn't so clear, but I think I got um, uh, Amoteko response to Okiogun uh, in Broglio. And then I got the CCTV all over Yoruba land uh, issue. So yeah. if those are the two points, I can go ahead to it. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct because it was not very clear from my end as well. But you are you are right okay. on those two points. So, yeah, um, let's. Um, you see, Amotekun is emerging. It's an emerging phenomenon, and um, you can be rest assured that I'm sure you all know that full and incursion and all the various distance in Yoruba land has decreased tremendously ever since the emergence of Amotekun. And Amoteku can only grow stronger and emerge more resourceful and effective. So whatever is happening, if there, is, if there are skirmishes here and there, they will be a thing of the past, I can assure you. Now concerning CCTV all over Yoruba land, uh, well, the, I think this is the decision of most state governments. If they decide that, uh, that's, I mean, of course, that technology is the way of the future. In uh, many of these developed countries, you have CCTV everywhere. So uh, that's a very um, great uh, point to um, encourage, you know. Right. I hope that answers um, the question. Yes, I'm. I'm. Pre I, I think I. I. Uh, it wasn't clear, but I. I have. A, I had a feeling that was Adekunle Uluwalano. Now let's quickly go through some of the um, comments made by people online. You see, um, I've got Dre Dre who said they already they are that the Amotek DM Fulanese are already in the southwest forest. We knew that that they are scattered all over our forest, and as a matter of fact. These Fulanis in our forest who hijacked our forest in the southwest. You remember, they killed the daughter of uh, Pa Fashionotti uh, on her way back to Lagos. How do we tackle this issue, especially now that we have a state of insecurity all over the nooks and crannies of the entire? nation called nigeria mr Akiola, over to you please that was put forward by by dre dre <laughs> that's not an issue i'm prepared to discuss online 
Okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, course, let me put it this way. Let me put the confidence of the caller. Uh, let me put the call the caller. Um, let me put his heart at ease. That he nothing will stand. No weapon fashioned against the Yoruba will stand. You can be rest assured about that. No weapon fashioned against us will stand. I won't say more. Okay. Than that. Um, yeah, Odili Bartholomew Oya said these are Igbo, Igbo fans. They said them um, uh, the Fulanis need to go back to their territories from the south. How do we send them back from the southwest, Mr. Akiola? They will be sent back. But how? The full the, the how crocodile of the Fulanis in the is is very comfortable in a swamp it will be taken out of that swamp <laughs> into a territory beyond its knowledge and its can and its belly will be split up they will be sent back right right uh call us if you want to ring uh please the number to call is plus four four if you're calling from outside the uk seven three four one Two three four five six zero. Oh, maybe somebody can help us to pin that down. Now I've got one of our members, web members on Heritage TV here. Let me read his comment to you, uh, Mr. Akiola, Engineer Ulushegmu Opanuga. He said, "Let the Northerners fire the first salvo." then you will understand why the brits ran away in the time of colony who initiated independence question mark the yoruba what is engineer opanuga right on this issue um what was this i, I didn't get that point <laughs> oh i think um uh, uh, that 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 comment is gone because they are all they, they they're coming they keep coming and they keep going very grab very rapidly uh basically he's telling us that the independence independent for us to be independent as a yoruba nation the house of fulanese does not want to be part and parcel of nigeria and that who initiated our merging together as one i'm sure that was what he was talking about and i think i've got one as well here uh which i think i need to take from mr femi babalola he said the yorubas oh it seems that one too is gone very very fast these guys are they are leaving their comments so rapidly and it keeps disappearing james ayola said there's no going back ududua is here to stay Adi Omolua Biodudua, very proud to be a bona fide Yoruba Ududua son. Yoruba nation is greatness personified. Iwa Kwalumi Ewa, I want Olori Buruku Omo Ali Fulani, Uni Jagidi Jada Aralo Sopa Bubu. She's basically cursing. Let, let, let me make a comment now, there. Let me make a comment there. There's yeah. no need to call anybody names because yes. you, know, you are you are getting annoyed. You are not you are not you are not planning. You you are not mm. consciously designing a strategy. You are getting annoyed. You are calling people names, causing them. It does not change anything. What changes something is affirmative action, and that's mm. all of all of us should engage in affirmative action yeah let me let me let me take you back again because you did make mention of the fraudulent 1999 constitution that got us into this fix now have we got any referendum because some people will argue that the fraudulent 1999 constitution does not provide a room for a referendum 
should in case any of the federating uni want to go their separate ways. Now that we are agitating to go our way and some rogue politicians are now claiming okay. that there is no referendum if you want to go away. All right. Uh, yes, uh, let's take this call uh, and then we'll come back to that. Yes, caller, I'm sure that must have been. That's Buki Taiwo. Buki Taiwo. Carry on. Hello, caller. Yeah, it seems we've lost. You have a call. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Hello, caller. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, Kola. Um, I have a very quick question to ask. Um, yes, book it now. We are obviously um, having this ag agitation because we have the um, invasion of the uh, Fulani um, into the south southern area of um, of uh, of. Uh... Okay, my name is um, Book it mm -hmm. and I'm actually calling from London. Um, my yeah. main concern also is actually to do with the Chinese that have um, occupied um, most of the uh, um, Odutuwa nation areas and also the um, areas of the Biafra. Uh, what systems in place are you are you um, putting? What systems are you putting in place to make sure that the Chinese um, do not continue with the land grabbing in most of the Odutuwa land and also? Um, all right all right right thank you thank you very much bookie um uh yes i will uh, can you can you hear me, uh, Mr. Akiola? Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, please. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, it was not very clear to Buki Taiwo. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, please. Yeah, I didn't get her yeah. question. That's why I, I would like. To... Yeah, maybe 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 Mr. Thomas can cut her off because I picked up um, at the point that um, I needed to pick up. Now. Uh, Buki Taiwo uh, was actually referring to the land grabbing by the Chinese in Yoruba land. And she wants to know exactly what will happen to this menace the moment uh, Yoruba nation is realized. Over to you, Mr. Akiola. Yeah, um, quickly, you know, the the Chinese problem is all over the world, and uh, it's an expansionist policy. And I, I want to also learn something from uh, the way the Chinese are suddenly involved into a global uh, playing nation. Let us understand that 1945, the Chinese uh, were defeated by the, I mean, the, 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 the Japanese people had already occupied up to uh, three quarters of uh, China, up to Manchuria. So um, the Chinese nation was buffeted from all sides, from the Indian side, from the a Russian side from the Japanese everywhere. So the, the Chinese nation started realizing itself from 1945. And today they are a world player. And they are in everybody's, uh, they are in everybody's, you know, uh, hair. That is the way a, for a powerful nation should emerge and sustain itself. But of course, um, you are free to swing your hand and uh, your freedom to swing your hand ends where my nose begins. We, the Yoruba nation, should take a cue from the way what China is doing, that it has emerged and it realized itself, and ultimately achieve our republic. So if we don't want anything that they are doing to have consequential effects on our nation, or in our polity, or in our geography, we have to start acting in ways that says whatever they are doing is an attempt to us and that we don't want. But the first point of 
manufacturer is actually the achievement of a nation. If you can have policies, policy with stave off the aggressive. Without that, you can't do anything, you know, uh, holistically that would stave off the Chinese incursions. But of course, we can only educate our people that don't sell your birthright to Igbos, don't sell your lands to Igbos or to Chinese people. That's mm. the first point of departure now, to get our urbanization. Right. So, um, 1945, China was nowhere near Nigeria. 1950, China, I mean, China was nowhere near Nigeria. 1960, right up to 1970, China was nowhere, was not a match for Nigeria. And as a matter of fact, uh, our own sage, the late Chief Obafe Miawulowo, did so much for us in the Southwest. Now, with the emergence of our Yoruba nation, Mr. Akionla, how do you expect the Yoruba nation to deal with countries like China? Well, the, um, the only way we, we have to deal with each other as equal nations, and uh, we establish ourselves, uh, we establish ourselves um, as equal partners. That you know, we was the emphatically, you know. But of course, you know, no, there, there are no two ways to, to it. You have to be very strong economically. You have to be strong uh, politically. You have to be strong in terms of uh, uh, how you carry yourself as a nation on the global plane. We are having problems with that transmission. It seems Mr. Akinola's phone uh, has frozen for no apparent reasons. Uh, maybe Mr. Thomas will take over from here and then sort this technical issue out for us. Guys, um, you are still watching Cutting Edge from Heritage TV. I'm your host, uh, Frank Bello. I'm coming live and direct to you today, Saturday, the 20th day of May 2020. We've got Mr. Akiola. I can hear what you are saying. Back. I can okay. hear what you are saying. Yes. Can you hear me? Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can hear me, but we cannot hear you. So maybe you want to repeat exactly what you said whilst we lost you. We're to Yoruba Nation. Yes. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Um, what I said, Claire, what I said, the Yoruba nation. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but the, the 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 transmission is a bit dodgy. But we, it's just going in and out. Okay, what about now? Is it better now? Yeah, that's better now. That's better now. All right. What I'm saying is that you, see, you can only deal with other international community nations from a position economic strength, political strength, military strength. So by the time you um, achieve your nationhood, what can only happen, people can only respect you, other nations can only respect you when you are economically, politically, and militarily strong. Mm. Right. Uh, there are, there are, <laughs> oh dear i'm not going to take that question because i've got too many of these guys uh, too many of these guys uh, uh asking us uh, asking some tough questions okay uh, said in lagos alone there are over 1750 chinese companies and they are arming our people and their land again 
somebody is raising concern over the total number of Chinese people. He reckoned 1,750 Chinese companies and they are arming our people. Mr. Akiola, how do we defend ourselves? Chinese people? Is this a Chinese yeah, people Chinese are arming themselves? Chinese companies arming, arming Nigerians, arming Nigerians to kill themselves. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I really don't know anything about that. I don't know anything. About that. But of course, you know, the, 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 the antidote to all these things is just a, 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 a one stop. And that is to organize. You know, we have to organize as a people, we have to organize ourselves, you know, um, and plan strategies. So any, any eventuality that arises, whether coming from the Chinese angle, from the Igbo angle, or from the Fulani angle, can easily be addressed. Always enemies all over. So that's, if you don't organize, you are, if, you don't, if you don't plan, if you don't fail, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So you organize, organize, and organize. That is it. Right. Uh, you have a call. Okay, we we have a caller. Yes, caller. Good evening. Uh, could you please tell us your name and where you're calling from? My name is Akobi Odua. I'm calling you. Akobi Odua. Okay. Okay, any steps taken that we are serious about the Udu, the realization of Ududua Republic? Did you get that? At all. I didn't even, I didn't hear anything he said. Yeah, can, I think you, I captured managed, it, please let me I think I it was really thing um at the from that end as well, but I think I captured um the last bit, any steps taken that we are serious about the realization of Odudua Republic? I captured that. Is there any steps taken to make sure yeah. that we are serious about the realization of our Odudua Republic? Well, I think this interview is one of those steps. So there are many steps being taken in different directions to ensure that we don't fail in our quest. And let me now, put, let me emphasize this point, please. Let me emphasize this point. We do not intend to have any quarrel with any of our neighbors because they will remain our neighbors after we achieve the Yoruba nation. We do not intend to have any quarrel or any struggle or anything with any of our neighbors. If they want to remain our neighbors and remain our friends, they are free. We will only have problems with people that are against our ambition or the people that want to work against our interests. But we want to be friendly with everybody. That's a very clear now, point that needs to be made. Now, if we if we have to be friends with our neighbors, Mr. Akiola, does that mean the way Odudua Republic will deal with the Biafrans and the other parts from the East will be different? And the way we will deal in terms of our foreign relations with the North will be different. Is that what you what you're referring to? And does that mean that when we have to draft our foreign relations, because they will subsequently become 
our neighboring countries. Does that mean that there will be border control before the House of Fulanis can break in or come in into the Odudua Republic? And the Biafrans will have to get permits to come in, or will there be a kind of mutual agreement to, to freedom, free movement of people? Maybe you want to clarify this, or are we going to be bounded by the ECOWAS Treaty? Mr. Akiola, over to you. Well, let, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. We want to be friendly with people does not mean we what, we, what we have that are permanent, our interests. Where our interests are paramount, and clearly respected, we'll be friends with every other person. When we achieve the Yoruba a sovereign Yoruba nation, you know, so we'll be friends with all from so, uh, from the we achieve a Yoruba nation, a sovereign Yoruba nation. This this transmission is playing up. You know, that's the mantra. Yeah. But Our yeah, it is it is playing up. Right. Who hosted in one nation and the other that you can have peace. And uh, where the yeah. one okay, one you know. interest is not uh, being subsumed by the other. But a situation where somebody is saying that you he wants to come and kill and maim and rape, that is completely Unaccept completely. Mm. Okay, let me let because we are we, we are we are really dealing with some very very topical issues that may open up in some few couple of months time, depending on the flow and the type of wind blowing this our agitation now. Mr. Akiola, we've got many breaking, of Mr. the. Frank. Oh, I, I think this is technology. This is this is technological problem. Um, uh, can you hear me now? Am I clear now? Breaking. Hello. Right. Yeah, I, I think in the process. Okay, I think it is. It is definitely not from my end, but probably from the middle end now if you can hear me now i'll carry on we've got a situation whereby we've got loads of um a handful of the Igbo communities community settled in in yoruba land some of them long enough some of them born some of them they've got properties they've acquired property how do we deal with such situation, Mr. Akiola, when we subsequently realize our Ududua Republic? We have to put all this into account. Very quickly. The, Euro the Yoruba nation is a civilized nation. We have always uh, showed over the year, many years of our existence that we are very civilized. And um, anybody who has properties here and um, who has them legitimately, of course, will be respected. But of course, you, you will not, you, you cannot own your land. You cannot own Good. your land, you know. So all those policies will come up, you know, by the time we achieve our success. I think we shouldn't mm -hmm. jump the house no on, there on those ones. Yeah, no worries. I, I think we've got a caller um, who is uh, on the other side. Hello, Kola. What's your name and where are you calling from? Um, my name is Ifis Nachi. I am calling from Brazil. But uh, Achie. First of all, I want to thank uh, <coughs> Mr. Akinola. He's a good man. Yeah. And I commend his words. And. Uh, before I ask my question, I want him to advise his people not to sell land 
to whoever in Yoruba land so that these people can go back to their own land to build up their land. That's me. Comment. But now I'll go for my questions. The first question is Is the Yoruba worried about chasing the Fulani out of their land or realizing or trying to get their the Oduduwa nation? That's the first question. And the second question is what about the Igbos or other tribe that are born in Lagos or many states in Yoruba land? And these people have got land, and even the ones that are not that have not gotten land. If you if Oduduwa comes, what would they do? Back to their their father's land or they will still remain Oduduwa citizens of Oduduwa. That, right. That's my questions. Yeah. Would you would you please repeat the first question again, um, Archie? The first question is: Is the Urbas worried about kicking the Fulanis out of the Yoruba land? As in the bush is this Fulanis um, henchmen and all that in people. Are they worried of kicking these people out or they are more worried of getting or to do a nation? That's the first question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, did you get that, uh, Mr. Akiola? Uh, are we worried yeah. about kicking the Fulanis out of Yoruba land or worried about getting our nation? First one. Second one, I think we trashed the second question before the phone, the uh, phone, yeah. the phone ran. But then and again, there was an extension to that question um, that we did not trash, uh, which happens to be the other tribes, such as Ibu people that were born in Lagos, in Yoruba land. When Odudua Republic is realized, where do we put those children's nationality? That's number one. In fact, I'm going to take it a step further. What about those Yorubas that are married to the Igbo women or Igbo men married to Yoruba women and they've got children together and they want to come over to Yoruba land, but they were based in Igbo land. How do we look into that? What about if they are based in Yoruba land? How do we solve this issue? Mr. Akiola, over to you. All right, let's take the first one about the um, getting the full land out of our forests and all the rest, and then uh, which one has priority? Is it getting them out or getting the Nigerian Republic? I think one is an immediate problem that has to be solved, which is why Amatekun came up. It's an immediate <clears throat> it's an immediate problem that has to be resolved, and um, that is why Amatekun was born. But you see, the ultimate one that will solve all these problems for us now and for all time is to get an Udua nation. So. Um, getting an Udua nation will be a full and final, we put a full, a full and final stop to all this nonsense. While the media, in the immediate period, you know, the Amatekun will uh, endeavor to sanitize our forests. I think that's the first one. Then the second one, an extension to the question we already trashed earlier, is um, when you look at it, you know, it's there's a civilized way that all countries in the world are addressing this. When somebody is born somewhere, you, you apply for nationality or you apply for nationhood, and you are, you are, you are either granted or rejected. So if you, if you are born somewhere, there is, every country has its own um, design by which it accepts nationality of other countries and others. I think that would be the uh, one that would be adopted by a Yoruba nation. But of course, I don't have... Uh, I don't have complete answers to all this now because I don't represent 
the Yoruba nation, so to say, because it's not yet born. When it's born, it will be a collective decision of the right agencies and the group of people that are put in charge of this to answer. But that, as I said earlier, oh. there's a civilized method, um, there's a civilized way of doing things with regards to this kind of thing all over the world, adopted by most advanced countries. Right. We have another caller uh, from the studio. Caller, could you please tell us your name and Good where you're from? My name is, my name is Kike Lomo, calling from the uh, UK. Uh, I want okay, to thank Mr. Frank Bello for inviting Mr. Akiola and uh, thank Mr. Akiola for honoring the invitation, honoring our Yoruba people. I also want to thank Mr. Akiola for, you know, clearing the air for some of our youth who have been agitating and been angry because they believe that our elders just back there doing nothing. And as well thank him because uh, some of us believe that we have some kind of mumu cause on us and that they did not realize that disagreement happens everywhere they did not realize that disagreement is a human phenomenon I thank him very much for clearing this and explaining this to us my question now is to how many percent does uh, Mr. Akinola think that the Yoruba nation will be achieved, and if possible, how soon? At least, approximately, how soon can we achieve this? Uh, our Yoruba nation. That my that's my question, sir. Okay, Mr. Akiola, how soon will we achieve this? Our Yoruba nation. Uh, Kike Lomo wants to know, and she's calling from the UK. How soon? Everybody, everybody is too eager uh, to want to know how soon are we going to get this nation because each and every Yoruba sons and daughters outside location nine. If you understand, if you know, maybe you follow us later on location nine is Nigeria. Uh, they want to hold their own Odudua Republic passport and they want to come home to a Yoruba nation that is fully functional but not dysfunctional. So, how soon do you think we will realize our dreams? Mr. Akiola, over to you, sir. I didn't get the first part of our comment. You know, I didn't get the first part, but um, yeah. maybe you can we, help with that uh, clarity. That, uh, well, that would because the phone was a bit cracky as well from my end. So, but I was able to yeah. pick the second part. So, let's treat okay. the second part that we got clear okay. that house. Okay, I'm not God, and um, I can't uh, say precisely, oh, we're going to get another nation next week or whatever. But I'm a scientist, I'm a scientist, and I'm somebody that knows. Uh, the relationship between cause and effect, and um, the relationship between uh, work and outcome. So, whatever you put into a particular endeavor, give it that uh, is uh, based on your. That that line is cracking up. It's playing up again. Last yeah, it's back. For uh, heritage, one or two other people that is a world young, old, man, woman, you know, whichever climb that you belong, this is your project. You have to work at it. We all have to work at it. It's when we build the critical mass, it's when we build the critical mass that the momentum that will take us out of this moribund republic will uh, affect. So it's our collective duty, all of us. But I can tell you, if we work hard at it, we'll keep believing in it and pushing it beyond the boundaries of where it has gotten today. In another one year, we should be out. Our target. Another one year. So, right, another one year. But then and again, uh, Mr. Akiola, 
some you see nigeria i mean yoruba yoruba nation oduduwa republic has been admitted into the unpo and then we've got different uh disgruntled elements uh, in nigeria and yoruba land attributing that the unpo does not play any active role in granting any sovereign nation their independence now what steps are we making as yoruba people our leaders of thoughts and those who can see clearly that their people like yourself like myself and millions of yoruba sons and daughters in the diaspora clamoring for their nation what will they say to somebody like myself frank bello who perhaps happens to be the very first in the history of the world it's never never been done who destroyed a nigerian passport in fire telling them that i was not interested in that nation anymore but my ududua republic how are we going to move and what are those preparations that our think tanks our leaders of thoughts professor banjaki toye baba olushe all those progressive leaders who forgetting the fact that well they've done wrongs in the past but now they've seen clearly that nigeria what what are, what steps are they making to make sure that we realize this as quickly as possible mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's um, a connection problem there. We're having problems with connections. Did you get that, uh, Mr. Akiola? You have a call. I didn't get okay. it. I just got some things about UNPO and all the rest. I didn't get it clearly. Okay, I will. We will. We will take. We will take this caller, and then we will come back to that. Hello, Kola. What is your okay. name and where are you calling from? And I'll be glad if you can please speak louder. Um, good evening, Frambelo. Uh, oh, good yes. evening, Mr. Akiola. My name is Erilu Good evening. Good evening yes. to you. Carry on. And well, well done for a great job. Well done. I just want to Thank appreciate you. our father, Mr. Akiola, for being a very uh, 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 you know, very prompt in answering questions, and I want to, to to pray for him. I want to say a big thank you to you, that God will continue to to bless you with wisdom and understanding. What I want to say here is just to applaud you, you, not to ask any question, but I want to advise people that are listening to us. Uh, a lot of people are typing or coming in asking questions that are not necessary at, the, at this present time. And I'm just saying to you guys to please, especially our ego friends, we, we, we are very, very friendly with you. What we cannot do on your platforms, I don't want you to become into our platform to do that. It is not fear on us. We, you have your own platform where you, you talk about your own aims and objectives. That, that is what we are doing here. And I, I, we do not mind you coming in to ask question, questions, but please do not be insulted. And this is what I have to say here. I'll be, I'm not happy about what people are doing here. They will call in and ask about three, four questions. On their platform, we are not, we are not accepted. We are not allowed to even call in, talk less of even commenting rubbish on their platform. And what is good for the goose is also good for the man that please. Let's be mindful. And I want to call a spade a spade this evening. And I want it to be that way as from henceforth. 
enough is enough. Thank you, Mr. Fambelo. Thank you, Daddy Akiola, for a job well yeah. executed. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I return back to you, have a call. Yeah. Yeah. Before I, yeah, please hold on that call, um, Mr. Thomas. Uh, uh, before I return back to Mr. Akiola, let me quickly just pass this note of warning to anyone. If you think you are smart enough and you pass any unreasonable comment, I've not been paying close attention to that. This is heritage. Just if you're not comfortable, if you are an Igbo man or Igbo person and you are not comfortable with our agitation, I will strongly indulge you to just bow out now if you don't want any trouble. Bow out now. Now, over to you, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Yes. Good okay. evening, sir. Uh, What's your name? name where are Maurice, you calling from? And I'm calling from Texas. Maurice. Yes. I'm I think I know that. Happy for um, the program that is going on. Thank you, Mr. Thank Frank, you, and thank, thanks to the, our guest on the line. Uh, I am I am from the eastern part of Nigeria, supposedly the soon coming Biafra. So yeah. I want the Yorubas to do us a favor. Favor I want want them to do us is to stop selling lands to we the Igbos. It's not a bad thing. Self preservation has never been a bad thing anywhere in the world. We might see it as they are doing us bad, but at the long run, we shall see that what they are doing to us is actually doing us good. We should go and develop our place. Uh, but I, I, I myself, I have a land in Lagos, and at the same time, I'm thinking of selling the land and going back to my place to develop my place. So my Igbo brothers that are listening on this platform, we should go back and develop our place. They are not doing us any bad. It's a self-preservation. It's been done anywhere in the world. Thank you so much, and God bless you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, um, um, Mr. Akiola, I know Maurice from Texas very well. He's one of the people, one of our regulars. He's an Igbo guy. He said, we, Yorubas, you stop selling land to the Igbo people. Igbo people should go back to their land and then develop their lands. Now, this reminds me of the fact that people claim Lagos is a no man's land. Mr. Akinola, what are your takes on what Morris from Texas just outlined? Over to you. Well, I want to thank Maurice for advising his people rightly, you know, because um, really and truly, uh, you, you cannot be selling your patrimony and be selling your land and your ancestral inheritance anyhow to foreigners. You are going to lose uh, control over time. So, and again, you know, the advice that he has given to his people to go over to um, uh, Igbo land and develop the place is timely. Because that's the only way we can all work together and achieve greatness as separate nations. Well, with regards to Lagos, who's making all this silly statement about Lagos being not being Yoruba land? Who owns the please? I I don't think we should engage such useless call. topics. Like uh, somebody saying the Lagos is not Yoruba land. Whose land is it? They are worried the Jebu are the original settlers in Lagos. And we own it, and the larger people, we own it up to the sea. So if you say you own, the, are you, if you are an Igbo man and you say you, you Lagos is not is, uh, no man's land, where is the contiguity between Igbo land and Yoruba land that will make you have a part of Yoruba land? The Edo people that are, which, you know, that, you know, maybe for some time ruled over some parts of Lagos, ruled only over, Lagos Island, Eko, 
a place that they call a uh, uh, Dugoro, you know, a place where they were planting them, it's just a small place. And the the people that they sent from Edo were Yoruba. Don't forget that the king of Edo is from Ife. In fact, Edo people, the Oba of Benin, is being buried. All the Obas of Benin are buried in Ife. Anytime they die. There's a place in Ife called Oruba Edo. That is the, 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 the burial place of the kings of Edo land. So, if any where in the, any relationship between Edo and Yoruba, it's between brothers. But meanwhile, Edo people don't even own Lagos. Yoruba land completely, totally, unequivocally owns Lagos. Let anybody go and throw away their balder dash about uh, the ownership of Yoruba land. All the landowning chiefs in, Europe, in uh, Lagos are the Dejo the chiefs. They're the landowning chiefs. Even the above Lagos does not own land. So please don't let's uh, engage on such arguments about who owns Lagos. Lagos is 100% Yoruba land. On equivocal. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, thank you very much. You uh, have a call. Okay. We have another caller. The calls keep coming in. Okay, caller, uh, could you yeah. please identify? Good you? evening, Mr. Frank. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Molly Ivy. I'm from. I'm calling from the Netherlands. And I yeah, have a question. Good evening, Mr. Me. Akiola. I want to thank you for coming to the show. I have a question for yeah. you, sir. Yes, go on. Uh, my question is: How ready or how serious are the youth, Yoruba youth, in Nigeria? Because um, how ready are they to to achieve this uh, uh, this um, you know Oduduwa Republic? How ready are they? I really want to know from Mr. Akiola because he lives in Nigeria. I really want to know if the youth are ready. You know, the Yoruba youth are ready to fight for their own land. I want to know what is the position right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Molly. Thank you very much. That um, that was Molly Ib uh, from Netherlands, Mr. Akiola. See, we've got everyone around the whole world. She said, how ready are the Yoruba youths in fighting and achieving their dreams of the Odudua Republic? How prepared and ready are our youths. Mr. Akiola, over to you, sir. As I told you earlier, the movement is a moving train and it's gathering momentum every day. The movement is a is an express train on full throttle and it's gathering momentum every day. So ultimately, our youths, our students, our artisans, our market women, our church people, are getting increasingly mobilized. Even the international community, you can see this is the interest being uh, shown from Brazil, from USA, from the UK, from the Netherlands, from all over the world. Those are the ones that we keep moving here. I know so many other countries are listening. So uh, the same way that you are uh, you are getting mobilized is the same way our youth, our students, our market women, our traders, our artisans are getting mobilized. It is becoming a mass movement, incredible mass movement. So I can assure you that it's an idea whose time has come. The, the youths and the masses. And please, as I said earlier, this is not the work of just um, one person or Yoruba World Congress or any other group. It's a collective work. Mostly from the Netherlands, you can even mobilize Nigerian youth from where you are. Now, thank you. you talked about, yeah, you, Mr. Akiola, you talked about uh, uh, mass mobilization of people. You have a call. Yeah, we, we are going to, Mr. Thomas, please hold that call. Mass mobilization of Yoruba sons and daughters across the board. But Mr. Akiola, between you and I, we have a problem. And the problem that we have is how do we mobilize people in Yoruba land? That's number one. Number two, 
in a country where there is no light how do we get these messages across onto their phones so that they can listen to the different arguments that's been brought up by different quarters how do we educate our people into looking into the merits of owning our own nation we will take that call mr mr thomas mr Akiola, maybe you want to quickly expansiate and tell us something about this okay uh, good evening sirs uh, my name is Kola Ole, Kola from the u.s uh, i want to okay. ask you a question and uh, this bring uh, uh, as a result of the question a lady just asked about the preparedness of our youth back at home in nigeria because mr Akiola is from nigeria staying in nigeria yes. because yeah. something give me a concern about the program I watched yesterday about the uh, children or two, all questions raised about the two are public. We guy jettison. We have a lot of enlightened back to that are resourceful, intelligent, connected, but they are not bothered about this public. Uh, the like of the children or two, the ladder to ye and the rest of them. What are you doing, sir? To at least letting them get the reason for this to the public as it gains one idea they are fighting for. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Well, it's a collective uh, engagement. You know, we have to be engaging all our intelligence. As I said earlier, we put everything on the altar of logic. Logic is the for, logic, as they describe it, is the systematic way of reasoning. So you uh, put it on the logic, uh, on the altar of logic and um, make them see uh, where uh, the benefits of having an Odudura Republic is. We're not going to force anybody, as I said earlier, but of course, everybody can now begin to see that Nigeria is unworkable. That Nigeria is uh, a, 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 a nation, you know, working on tentacles, that it's uh, dead on arrival. So one way or the other, they will, begin, they will ultimately see the reason and see reason to why we should have our own nation and why we must go our separate ways. Right. You have a call. Oh. Okay, here we are. Uh, hello, Kola, good evening. There was this question uh, about the you... UNPO thing that you were talking about. I don't know whether we should go yeah, back to it. We... No, we, uh, we will come back to that. Let's take this, uh, Mr. Akiola. Kola, Please tell us your name and where you are calling from. My hello? name is Morfa from Saudi Arabia. I want to say hello to our, our daddy. Thank you very okay. much. We, we really appreciate. Then I want to I want to call your attention on the um, comment section. On comment section because we are here to listen to our daddy. We are not here for distraction. Please, there is one guy there that is distracting us. So we are, we you need to work the guy. We don't we don't need we don't need such energy again. We don't need it. What we are what we are looking for is very important to us. So those Hebrew Yoruba or something is not what we are looking for now. Please, you guys should stop it. But stop distracting us. We are looking forward for our own nation. So we don't need all, all those bad energy. And secondly, the, for the last person that called about the G or something, we don't need all those people. When the time comes, they will be the one that will join us. We don't need to be begging anybody to join the race. We are on our race already. We don't need them. If they, if they, know, that, if they know that this nation is important to them, they will join us. But for we to be begging them, I say they are something. They are nothing. Those people are nothing. So, boy, our father that is already with us, all, all our father, our uncles that they are, they are with us, we appreciate them. But the remains, the rest, we don't need them. We don't need to be begging anybody to, to follow us or to do this for us. So please, stop begging anybody. We don't need those people. If they need us, they will join us. But I know that as time goes on, they will be the one that will come for us. We, we, are, we are not the one that will be begging them for that. Thank you, sir. We, we really appreciate you, sir. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, let's quickly um, take this and then um, we'll be rounding up because it is just coming to 16 minutes past um, uh, 
10 o'clock uh, mm -hmm. here in London and at the same time in Nigeria. It's very tough and very difficult for putting Mr. Akinola on the spotlight. I was talking about the UNPO the other time and at the same time I want to link the two together because we are talking about the mass movement of people into our new nation but then and again we are faced with problems the first problem is how do we educate those people in yoruba land the yorubas in their own yoruba land not forgetting that the government of the day had already bastardized them by not providing electricity constant electricity to even power up their mobile phones so we've got problems even if information is filtering through to them from external sources uh, with the exception of those that are in nigeria that were unable to feed them with the right information we've got problems on how to get them in alignment to our own agitation now to the question of the UNPO we've got a lot of people within the Yoruba land itself and those that are against our agitation claiming that the UNPO does not have authority or autonomy to determine which nation should be independent could you please enlighten us on where we stand as a nation in our, our our agitation and then what were the reasons if you uh were unable to help us so why have they listed us as potentially new nations that will emerge please over to you mr Akinola. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, let's take the first one. Um, with regards to what we're doing, <clears throat> how to uh, mobilize our people. Let me take you back to 1964. 1964, there was only red diffusion. There was no television except in some select places in Yoruba land. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. there was a revolution in Yoruba land that led to the crew operation wait here and not the rest you exactly. ask yourself yeah. the question how did we mobilize them mm. the world we go around forget about that now in this day and age we have more advanced technologies like the one you are using now, you are not using TV, but you are using TV. You are using the internet. Uh, and uh, there are so many other smartphones all over the whole place that people are using. So that's why the mobilization is even faster and it's more effective now. We, the people, in Nigeria, we have learned to, especially in Yoruba, we have learned to, co to cope with the horrendous situation of lack of electricity. So at least, you know, you can charge your phones everywhere. People who are interested, that they, they are online. A lot of people are watching this program now, not because there's electricity per se, but because they are prepared for it, they have charged their phones in advance. There are uh, phone banks, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, storage banks that people buy. And then people use, I uh, better pass my neighbor, small, small generators here and there. We will get by until we're able to get our outdoor nation. When we get our outdoor nation, electricity supply will be a thing of the past i can assure you it's not magic it's not rocket science so all those things will happen but right now <clears throat> let's just take that one out of the way our people are getting mobilized secondly on the issue of the umpu um you will have to add the people that are saying the umpu cannot be the solution the umpu cannot uh, uh get a nation for us okay what have you done you that you are saying the UMPO is not this, is not that. What have you done to advance the agitation? What have you done to advance our quest for our own nation? 
What have you done to advance the quest for a better Yoruba land? We at the Yoruba, Yoruba World Congress have decided to take the fight beyond the borders of Nigeria. We have taken it to the international community. That is the first achievement of joining the UNPO. That is the first achievement that has done for the Yoruba. We have taken this uh, agitation now beyond the confines of Nigeria into the international community and I spearheaded that mm -hmm. on behalf of the Yoruba World Congress. The Yoruba World Congress uh, is fighting on all different levels to achieve autonomy, to achieve independence, to achieve um, self-determination for the Yoruba people. And this is one other step. We are main, there are many steps that are being planned. What is the UNPO? The UNPA is the, or the Unrepresented Nations and People's Organization. It's an international membership-based organization established to empower, you know, the voices of unrepresented and marginalized peoples worldwide and to protect their fundamental human rights. That on its own is a strong statement. It was founded in 1991 at The Hague in the Netherlands. And don't forget that The Hague in the Netherlands is where you have the World Court. That's why they have the criminal court and all these other places. So it's, it's an iconic place where justice is sought and gotten. So the UNPO represents another chapter in our quest for nationhood. There are so many other countries, there are over 40 countries that are members of the UNPO now. What are they doing there? Are they playing? Are, 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 are they getting some time there? Everybody desires something, and the UNPO has come. It's a unique uh, press. It has a unique presence in the international arena, you know, where most some of the nations I can tell you that have gotten their independence through the support of the UNPO are Armenia, East Timor, Estonia, Latvia, Georgia, and Palau, and these are countries that hitherto were uh, part of. Um, oppressive nations. Now they are fully independent nations and they were former members of the UNPO. So taking Yoruba to the UNPO is a step in the right direction to advance our agitation for nationhood without going violent, without saying, you know, taking up arms. This is the peaceful way to go. And we have, we are fighting relentlessly with the guidance of the United, of the UNPO, because the UNPO has an unabridged presence before the United Nations, it has a full presence before the United States Congress, it has a full presence between before the European Union. The UNPO is more equipped to present our cases and train us in better ways to achieve our goal. So, anybody who is saying that the United Nations is of no help. I mean, the, the United, uh, the, the UNPO move is not helpful. Is only trying to be uh, economical with the truth. Because you will have to ask them, okay, if the UNPO is nothing, why, is there, why are you agitated about it? Why is it now um, controlling the public discourse? It is because it is so effective <laughs> that they are, everybody is now uh, worried. And uh, these people are going to, the way they are going with this, the way that they have achieved the UNPO membership shows that they are really, really, really serious. So I don't think we should mind all those people who are saying the UNPO is not uh, the way forward. What, how did all those other nations get their own you independence, if not with the help of UNPO? So that, that's as much as I can comment on that. Hmm. Now, thank you very much. Um, we've, we seem to have um, another caller, and then I'll put um, uh, the last two questions to you, and then uh, we'll call it. Uh, uh, I'm calling from. Uh, sorry, my name is Raf. I'm yeah. calling from uh, London. What is your Hello. name? That phone is very. That phone is cracking. It's cracking. It's cracking up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Uh, what are we? What are we? That for that line is not bad. That line is very bad. Hello. Yes. So What's your what name? Are what are you calling? Me? Yeah. 
Hello, uh, what uh, is your name? My name is uh, uh, Adi from London. So, what I will suggest, whether uh, Villa Duro to you or Adi Yoju, whether they support or they don't support, that one is not the problem. I think the most, the most important thing is uh, to uh, to let our people, our people that live in rural areas, and our people that are illiterate people, I'm very sorry to use that word. So I think that one is uh, the most important thing for them. If those, if those ones can have a full support, I'm not saying uh, whether the uh, or the idea are not important. They are important because it took me some years for me to realize that. Uh, that's nothing for Nigeria and to go for the Republic. But for them, you can leave them with time. Maybe you can reason with us too. And this is not by speaking big grammar or maybe you have a professor or you just in logical thinking, just to be able to see beyond what people can see. That's the point. So another thing that I want to chip in again is uh, how do we deal with our people that uh, they are tormenting from, for example, if you go to uh, 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 mm -hmm. in Lagos, in Lagos, in Lagos in people from uh, uh, foreign athletes from Lebanese uh, people, from Asian people that are dominating our people. What can, I do? what can we do now? Um, what can we do after when we achieve what we do? So that is my, my take. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you. I think um, it was, I think it um, was referring to. Um, to the issue of Feladro Toye as discussed, which I don't really think is worth our while. But the second point was how do we deal with our people and those tormenting them? I think it was particularly referring to those Lebanese because there was a case of a Lebanese um, a man uh, involved in some nasty situation with a with Niger a Nigerian woman. Now. Uh, how do we deal with such situation, situation uh, Mr. Kinola? Hey, let me let me answer those questions with some Yoruba proverbs. You know, uh, you know, you know, you and uh, another one, I call warning you, loan shake Now, what are we saying? You have to make yourself strong. As a nation, you have to be a strong Yoruba nation before any nation in the world takes you serious. And the first and fundamental thing to do is to get your nationhood first. Once you have your nation, every, and then you make yourself strong, a self-defense force that is world class. No person anywhere in the world will attempt to maltreat or mistreat your citizens. But we are being maltreated all over the whole place now because we don't have a voice. We don't have a nation. And nobody is defending us. So that's why you have all these trashy things coming out. The Arab nations and the Caucasian race, the Western nations, they have always been anti-black from time immemorial. It's not just, it didn't just start today. Don't forget why the Arabs came from the north through the Sahara Desert to enslave our people. And these Fulani people are part of them. Then the white man came from the Atlantic Ocean, you know, from the south to enslave our people. They are all imperialists. And the only way to deal with imperialists is only one, only one solution. An oppressor does not understand any language except the language of confrontation. <laughs> That is the only language they understand. And most of these people, a bully is very weak with the strong. A bully is very weak with the strong. And if, you know, they are very strong with the weak, but they are weak with the strong. So you have to show them that you have purpose, that you have temerity and you know, a tough skin, and that you can take them on, on the intellectual level, on the political level, even if it comes to the military level. We have to show that we can take them on. The Lebanese that are maltreating our people, they're not just in Lebanon. They're in Oman. They're in Doha. They're in the uh, United Arab Emirates. They're in Saudi Arabia, where they're maltreating Yoruba people. You but why are they maltreating you? Because you put yourself at their disposal. And you put yourself at their disposal because nationally at home, you are weak. So it's only when you um, rev up and you 
develop a strong nation with strong ethos and a strong commitment to develop defending your people anywhere they are in the world that people will respect you as a nation and they will respect your people i call one year you don't check up on a beraju new king jk tell me you mole by the time they know that we have the venom people will people will fear us and they will you know not touch they will not mess up with our people okay thank you very much mr kyola we have i think we will take this last caller and i think mr thomas uh, uh i'll be glad if you can switch that off uh so that we can round up uh because i've got uh, one or two uh, questions Good evening, sir. Carry on, sir. Hello. Yes, Daddy Ajala. Good evening, sir. Carry on, sir. Carry on, sir. I can hear you. Yes, sir. Carry on, sir. Lord Akiola, from all that said and explained. Just the way I we want to hear about the new Yoruba nation coming out of the results country. Because to see that uh, we should not try to we should not try to look at Nigeria as a nation. It's never been a nation. Has never been a nation at any point in the history. We have Yoruba group kingdom the and the, the, the Republican group, they now see that this, these people can't work together to get the world to legislate. 1914, uh, January 7th, when the celebration in Kano, there was no celebration in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So that, you see, the pain that we have got it. The weapon we need now, like I've been listening to you, is formation, part and figure. And anywhere, because this is the part of when we virtually go to the next nation to not see, to deny that we are half of that, either by referendum or by fear. Because enough is. You mentioned, you know, let the television that was then at the time when Kandida was supposed to come on stream. The director general of that Kandida, when he was going to call NDA, Chief Laguju, told us that the president of the country was just high on us. They got the presentation was not to be closed down. Run forward. Let's say, not an elect government of the president, it is going to be a professional and a developed city. But what do we have for the whole of Nigeria now? You see, these are some of the information we need to let our people know. There's a deliberate action that develops us. Just right from the front, the country was created. More than that, we come and tell you. George Akiola for everything you have done today, and Frank Beno for the way you handled the handle of all the and everyone speaking to you, like we would vote, come up and say, if I'm a Yoruba man, then I want my country back. So any Yoruba man who has doubt, I'm a Yoruba man, because we've had enough Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Daddy Ajala. Um, I think um, I, it was the line was again very bad, but I think I picked up a um, few bits and pieces. Um, Daddy Ajala said we need information, we need facts, we need figures, and I think he did touch on a referendum. And um, if I may perhaps bring our session uh this night uh, uh gradually to a close 
uh, there is I've got two final questions to ask uh, Mr. Akeola. You said that whether the contraption called Nigeria likes it or not, and we all know for a fact that Ududua nation will be born perhaps within a year mm. from now it will be born what will happen i'm asking what if now it is what if the fulanese and the northern caliphate then decide to say oh these people this Yoruba people are going. What happens if they say we don't want to break Nigeria up? And then what kind of advice will you give out to the young folks, the youths? in nigeria in this struggle and movement for our agitation and a quick realization of the yoruba nation mr kenola over to you well if i understand what you are trying to say you are saying um the there's a change of mind by the Fulani North who say they don't want to break Nigeria up, they want to negotiate something. I, yes. Is that what you're saying? And then, yes, how will our, it. How, and then how will our youth take it or something like that? That's right. And then, um, and then the advice you will give to our youth in response to that. Well, let me tell you something. Um, a leopard can never change its spots. The snake, the full and snake, is understood for what it is. When they recognize that the um, you they, that they, they cannot win a particular thing, they try to use subterfuge and all sorts of things to get their way, and ultimately they come back stronger to continue under oppression. So it's it's a song that has uh, lost its um, tenor. It's a song that has lost its value. And we will not be hoodwinked to think that again. What we want is an irrevocably Odudua Republic. Whatever situation may come, they, I mean, we can relate with any of our neighbors, we can relate with them, but it's going to be on the, on the fundamental point that we desire self-determination, we desire full autonomy, we desire our full nation. Then we negotiate with any group. That is the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. So you can't say, they did the same thing, if you remember, during the June 12 crisis, when Yoruba fought, a, fought Nigeria to a standstill for five years. I was part of that struggle. For five years, nothing was moving in Nigeria until the Nigerian establishment gave up and decided to negotiate. Then they put two Yoruba people in place after they had killed Abiola. They put two Yoruba people to go for election, Abiola and I mean, uh, Olufala and Obasanjo. Are we not worse off today? We are worse off. Because they came back stronger after they had stabilized the nation when we the Yoruba agreed. So there is going to be no retreat, no surrender on this issue, please. So as okay. for the Yoruba youths, we want to encourage them to continue the agitation because it's their battle. The Yoruba youth and so there's everybody's battle. We must realize our nation. We, we've taken enough shit from Nigeria. We've taken enough nonsense. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. You said uh, we want our own Yoruba nation. And this will be my final question. And that Yoruba nation is irrevocable. What 
are your advice as an executive of the Yoruba World Congress in this movement to a handful, to the millions of Yoruba sons and daughters in the diaspora? How do you want them to partake in the struggle? And what are your expectations from those of us who are outside the Odudua Republic? This is the final one, and we'll bring this to a close. Mr. Akinola, thank you. Over to you. Yeah, thank you for that last question. Now, um, we are encouraging every, don't forget the name is Yoruba World Congress. It's not Yoruba, yes, Yoruba. National Congress. Is Yoruba, Yoruba World, World Congress. Congress. Yoruba yes. World Congress, yes. So every Yoruba yeah, group God. in every part of the world is encouraged to set up a Yoruba World Congress branch in their place of uh, where they're domiciled. So, um, like for example now, we had a meeting, I think sometimes in February, where we had uh, representatives from over 15 countries who came in to represent Yoruba World Congress all over the world. So Yoruba World Congress is not just uh, based in Yoruba land, it's based all over the world, it's based, you know, domiciled all over the world. So what I will encourage the diaspora Yoruba to continue to do is to expand, you know, um, Yoruba World Congress in whatever country where they are. We are looking to set up in Jamaica, for example, you know, all those people that you see using Bolt and all the rest, you know, Shelly and Free Surprise and all those that are doing wonderful things on the field of athletics. They are Omo Yoruba anymore. They are all Yoruba descendants. All those people you see fighting boxing in Cuba or being fantastic medical doctors from Cuba, they are Yoruba people. So we encourage everybody, all the diaspora in Yoruba, to set up branches of the Yoruba World Congress in every part of the world. So that together we have, because Yoruba has the largest diaspora in the world. I must emphasize this to you. Israel was able to achieve an Israel nation because of their diaspora population. And they're just, in the whole world, the total number of uh, Jews or Israelis is less than 11 million. 5.5 million in Israel and 5 million in the US. And then scattered all over the whole world like that. So the diaspora Jews, they're not many, but they were able to achieve a fundamental thing and they achieved the state of Israel. So what about the Yoruba diaspora that is in excess of 300 million? So, I mean, you know, we, we can achieve phenomenal things all over the world if we all come together and we use our diaspora power. Economically, politically, you know, and in whatever other form. The Yoruba nation is, the more you think about it, the more you're excited. The more you, because if they can be killing a George Floyd in the US or, you know, shooting people that, you give the, you give, Blacks all over the world, the confidence that there's a Yoruba nation that is powerful, rich culture, rich, diverse economy, everything, people will be encouraged and they will be stronger to come. They will feel stronger that there's a power behind them. Awani, Begadula, war. So we must get our nation. There's no two ways about it. There's no other thing about how the black man can be emancipated except when you get a Yoruba nation. It is the richest culture in the world the richest culture from Africa. Every person outside Nigeria, when they think about Nigerian culture, they are talking about Yoruba culture, they are not talking about that thing. It's Yoruba culture. It's the only one that survived outside Nigeria. So let us achieve it together. Please, thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. You have a call. George. Oh. Okay, uh, we will take this last caller so that I'm not um, a little bit sarcastic or a little bit nasty. Let's take this last call and we will end the program. Caller, please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Yeah, my name is Dominic, calling from London. Did you say Derek? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Bello. Well, thank you for the job you are doing. I appreciate you so much. Yes. Uh, thank you. For a fact of becoming a nation, it has been long overdue. And that is why we are saying thank you for the job you are doing. 
If you don't do Thank this, you. this has to be taken serious. The Yoruba has to come up straight away. They have come of age for a long time. I don't know how they have been waiting for. Because when Yoruba take a lead, everyone has um, a religion in this, uh, the South. We take a lead. But having said that, there's something that I want to say. Uh, you know, a day where I come from, a day and better before Bender State or before Midwestern State, we were statistically created in 1963. Be that as it may, so we see our right to form our nation. But if you look at it, a door and the uh, U.S. cannot be separated. A door and Igbo cannot be separated. I will tell you why. And uh, the reason being that from one go and part of uh, this state, they are speaking Yoruba. If you will go to Beta, it's okay, they are speaking Yoruba. If you go to, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, Beta uh, uh, North, you see they are speaking Hindu. They are Hassan and others in my village. They speak Igbo. We speak all these ones, speak Yoruba, speak all of them. So we are in all of this. So I will all show you that whatsoever that we have been the difference. I'm not saying they are going to be trying to maintain peace. Let them relate with Igbo. Let them settle with Igbo. Let the Igbo equally stand up and settle with the Yoruba. That's the problem. This is why the Lord Panas are flogging us from left and right. Because we refuse to get it together. Because we have the same similarity in terms of culture, in terms of religion. Anything you can think of. So why are we still having this grievance? We should make go so that we come together. I know Swabelo, so many Igbo people we have as a friend. I know some of the Igbos who are having their as a friend here. Let's come together and remove this and we can come that doesn't allow us to move forward. If we're able to remove this, these guys in North and have tried to use us to make uh, food for them so that they will be producing children like an incubator. They will be servicing those children. So we will not, we will not be there. Let's 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 settle. When we settle, if possible, they can use a door and a data to be a headquarter. If nobody wants to be cheated, we are equally have accessibility to Russia. Then when that, that place can become the capital, then evil will come from this room, throw us will come from this room, then they develop that place, it becomes home as well. I'm not saying it because I'm there, I'm going to look at how we can settle to so that we can move forward. We must set to a door and then people are going back to set. So that we will not fall. I will thank you about for what you have done. That I'm not to put the drugs. To see when they drop it, these guys are afraid. And I want them to do more. What are they waiting for? We got to leave these guys. We are working. Somebody is shooting me to make a uh, some people are producing children. The children that we are we are not working. Then they are eating. They are telling us what to do. We we never, we can never accept this. And I know from this to do believe. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Derek. I, I think um, I, I'll just quickly um, help uh, Derek, um, uh, Mr. Akuna. He's, he's basically talking about territorial battles, uh, most especially in Edo State and Delta State, Edo, Delta North Edo, Delta South, Chapter and the Uvas. Uh, territorial battle and advocating that um, uh, the entire southern Nigeria to work together to get this our independence. So, in other words, the Biafra uh, and the Odubula working together to get uh, to get themselves out of that contraption of Nigeria, and then we move forward. So, on this note. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to our guest, Mr. George Atula, one of the top executive member of the Yoruba World Congress uh, in Lagos. Now the time in London is just coming to 22.50, 10 minutes to 11 o'clock. It's been a cracking session, like I always say. Guys, Thank you very much, and I want to please give Mr. George Atimala a very big uh, round of applause. He's done very well on Heritage TV tonight. He's given us some of the greyish area that is that's a little bit dark to some of us in the diaspora. Mr. Akiola, 
it's been a pleasure and for the benefit of those who don't really know mr george akiola go back onto youtube you'll see where he kept on saying the time for restructuring is gone all we want is our yoruba nation and by the special grace of Eledumare Odua, that Yoruba nation, our dream, the Odudura Republic, that Mr. George Akiola, myself, Professor Banji Akitoye, any forward right thinking conservative mm -hmm. Yoruba sons and daughters are craving for. I'm craving for it, just like many progressives who wants their nation. We need to get out. And on this note, all of you that called, many of you with your comments that I was unable to take, I want to seize this opportunity on behalf of our guest, uh, on cutting edge, Mr. George Akiola, to wish you all a very good weekend. And we will do it once again at some, some of the time. It's been my pleasure. I'm your host, Frank Bennett. Thank you for watching. We'll catch up with you some other time. Thank you. You have a great day. for study, research, and practical life application. It documents your persuasions and impacts much desired knowledge. Even God sent his son but left his book featuring books written by Apostle Courage. Revelation and Relationship, a book for the spiritual hungry, which unveils the person of Jesus and brings you closer in your work with God. This book empowers your hunger for his presence and takes you to a new place in God. 100 Reasons Why I Hate Poverty This book unveils the perils, kinds of poverty but unveils heaven's plan of unlimited wealth and blessing for the believer. If you're concerned of not just being blessed but being a blessing to your generation, this is your book. Forgiveness, God's Roadmap to Heaven. This book tackles head-on the iniquity of unforgiveness in our lives and gives us practical keys to launch us to a new life that forgives like God does. If making heaven matters to you and you need help to let go some things, get this book now. God's Weapon of Mass Destruction. This book brings to light 14 weapons God has given every believer against our arch enemy, Satan, the devil, so we may constantly be able to live a life of victory. Every intercessor needs this book. Lesson from the Furnace of Affliction. An encyclopedia on knowledge. This study guide brings divine answers to some of life's unspoken questions. In this book, you will learn about the danger of discouragement, the twin brothers to heaven, the accusing spirit, lessons for singles and demarried, intensive school of ministry sessions, and lots more. The principles taught are challenging and revelatory. Next to the Bible, this will be your favorite book. 12. Ironic Benefits of an Enemy Reveals the wisdom in dealing with people and how to unveil ulterior motives and 12 things you can benefit in seasons of ferocious attacks. This is the book everyone is talking about. I strongly believe in investing in knowledge. Your spirit man is the greatest investment you should invest in. 
what it took somebody five years to know you can know in two hours buy one for yourself and buy extra copies to bless somebody else these books will change your world there is always something you don't know the best gift to give to a child is the gift of knowledge the best investment of your life is the one made in your mind and spirit get your copies now and for your friends available online at amazon.com jgmsite.org allnationschurches.org or test 214-335-2380 Get your copies now 